Here are a couple of quick things that you can do to make your uh, SolidWorks simulations a little bit faster, a little bit better. I'm going to sketch, uh, I'll start out by sketching on the right plane, and I'm going to extrude into that, and that makes my beam run along the x-axis. So I use the center rectangle, I'll extrude, uh, I'll draw out from the origin, so I've got that. And now I want to dimension it, so I'm going to hold the right key and go up. I've configured it such that that uh, makes the dimensions appear. I'll call it, I'll make this one and a half inches and the height of the beam three and a half inches. Now what I'll do is extrude this, I'll go mid-plane. So from the sketch plane I'll go mid-plane and this allows me just to have a center point right at the middle of it. And I'll make it five feet long or 60 inches. So now we need to specify the material for the beam. Typically I'd gone in and gone into edit material, but there's some materials that I use quite regularly. One of them is 6061 alloy, and another one is just add alloy steel. I'll add it to this customized list, and once you do it, you've got access to it, and it makes it a lot faster. So I'll go, um, I'll close out of this, actually. I'll right-click, go Manage Favorites, and SolidWorks material, it's a steel that I want to add, and an alloy steel and I'll click here to add that to the list. Now I've got it in my list. If I want to, since I use it quite a bit, I'll just put that first on the list by using the up arrow. This makes it a little bit faster. I'll just right click and now I've got alloy steel. I'll just apply it and I'm good to go. Another shortcut I've used, I'm right clicking and I've included the simulation button there. So I can just do right click uh, and go to the left and that brings me right into uh, a simulation. So I'll go up here and customize and mouse gestures. But here I could drop down and go simulation commands and I have to find simulation study as a uh, left click for the mouse. I could use this drop down here to give it any direction I want but I find that I, I'm used to the left click and that allows me to go right over here and click study. I'll show you how to do two different beams. The first one, let's do a fixed geometry. So a fixed support at the left and right of the beam, and I'll apply a distributed load right down the middle of it. So I'll right click and go fixed geometry. Zoom in here, we want that face. Zoom in over here, and we want that face. Click OK, I've got my fixed geometries. Now I'll right click here, go force, and I want to apply the force to this top face. And it's normal to that face, so it looks good. And let's have it be, uh, I don't know, 100 Newton, or let's use uh, English units. We'll do uh, 100 pound downward force and click OK. At this point, I always, always save it because it's a little bit unstable. So now when it's, once it's saved, I believe I'm ready to run this and everything is good to go. It shows my deformed beam. But let's say I don't want fixed geometry. I want two pins. I want a pin and essentially a roller over over in the right side. And the problem with this fixed geometry is I've constrained it to be vertical and I've also constrained it to not move left and right. So what I've actually done is a fixed geometry for this one. But I want to I want actually want a pin beam. So what I'm going to do is right click under this fixed geometry. I'll delete those and I'll click OK on that. And now I freed up on the left and the right side. I'll go back to model and come back to static simulation so we can see the undeformed part. So to do two pins, you might think offhand, I've got a downward load of 100 pounds. That means I need two upward forces of 50 pounds on both ends to counter that downward force. So let's do that. I'll right click external loads, a force, and let's apply the force to this face and in a selected direction. I'll use, you can use whatever you like. I'll use the top plane for a direction and we'll do English units normal to that and I'll have a force of 100 pounds or actually 50 pounds in the upward direction here. I'll come back here and let's do the same thing for this face and I've got a 50 pound load. One thing you'll want to do is either we could do per item so 50 pounds per face or I could also say a total force of the addition, the sum of both faces. And this is really useful if you have different types of geometry. So let's do total, and we want a total upward force of 100 pounds. So you would think we've got a 100 pound downward force and two 50 pound upward forces. Everything should work, but I suspect that it won't. Typically, it hasn't for me. I'll click Run, and it says no restraints are defined. You may use soft spring or inertia relief options. And what this inertia relief does is that there is, if I go back to the model, a, any small difference in the uh, forces just due to the numerical computations of what's going on, just small differences, will cause the beam to accelerate off in some direction. SolidWorks doesn't know how, how to handle that. 
but there is a way to do it. So I would right click, we could either go study and study properties here to get this window or a little bit, maybe a little bit faster, right click here and go properties. And what you'll want, you've got some uh, different options, but here inertial relief, what that does, SolidWorks will automatically accommodate for those tiny little differences and it recognizes it will apply a small force at each one of the nodes to keep the beam from flying away. So once I've got that checked, I'll resave it and now I'll run it. And now what we can see is the bent beam, but more specifically, these sides get to be angled and they actually behave as pinned geometries. There's no uh, bending moment at either side of these. So that's one way to do this. One thing that you might encounter is if we edit the forces on either side of the beam, so force 2, edit definition, if I forgot, if I left this at per item but I kept it at 100 pounds, what I've actually done is apply a 200 pound upward force and that's in balance with the 100 pound downward force. So let's do it. I'll click OK and now when I click run, I get this error. It says there's a significant external imbalance force and, and do you wish to continue? And I could say OK, but this will give me an inaccurate result. What it did was stabilize the uh, downward force uh, through all of the nodes itself. It's completely unrealistic. So if you get that error, make sure that you go back and edit this, uh, this second force. Another thing that could cause it is if you are accidentally in uh, SI units, you set 100 pounds total, or 100 newtons total, of course that's different than 100 pounds, and you ought to get the same error here if you made that mistake. So here I've rerun the simulation. I've changed the colors from to red, white, and blue so that we can quickly see the blue regions are under compression, the red regions are under tension, and what I'm plotting is sigma x, or the, uh, the normal force in the x direction. So a couple of trends, we see no normal force at the ends and then no normal force along the central or the uh, neutral axis. But one thing that's a little bit troublesome is just how dark um, this axis is. So it's in a, a shadow and it's hard to compare with the actual values. So let's change the lighting. Go here and now click, this looks like a little movie camera view scenes lighting. So lights, I'll get rid of the directional lights for the purpose of visualizing the simulation. The directional lights are just like a flashlight or something shining on one part of the beam. This made it darker, but let's pump up, I'm going to right click and go edit light and I'll pump up the uh, lighting here to make it uh, I could go all the way to the right. Let's just do that. And you could tell at a glance that it's much, much easier to see the stress buildup in the beams. If I want to, I can go down here, click uh, plain white, and that makes it even more obvious that there's very little or no stress along the midpoint. If I hit control 1 to go to the front view, I can hit control and my middle mouse key to move it around. I could hit shift and up to move it uh, rotating about the x-axis 90 degrees. Shift to the right makes it rotate about the y-axis. And I'll hit control 1 again to go back to that view. I can also hit control uh, with the arrow keys to move it to actually pan left and, for, uh, left and right. And let's say I want to store this as an image in a Word document if I was going to turn it in or use it in a report. I'll hit the Windows button if you're on a PC, a Windows button and the letter S for shot. And I'll go like, I usually go like this to pinpoint the lower right of the square. I'll hit it again without moving my mouse and then I'll come up and this allows me, I'm taking a screenshot, it allows me to center up and clip what I need. I'll go into Word and paste it into here, uh, maybe make it the width of the page. And now I've got a uh, convenient way to uh, write about my part and turn it in. If I want to, it might be more realistic if I come back to my results and right click here, edit definition, and I'll do true scale deformation. This is of course over exaggerated for a steel beam. And now of course with the 100 pound load applied to a large steel beam like that, it doesn't, it doesn't deflect very much. But there are stresses built up uh, under uh, compression and under tension at the top and bottom. So again, I'll do Windows S, grab my uh, screenshot, come back to uh, Word or however else I want to turn it in and paste it in that way. Another thing you could do is let's say you're at some weird view angle and I come back, I look at my other ones, displacement plots or something like that, but I really in the uh, X uh, normal force, I really want it to be a uh, front view and I'd like it to always be a front view. So here I'll come back to something arbitrary, right click here, go chart options and under the definition tab I can click down, go property 
and associate plot with uh, the front view. It's just associated with that. I'll click OK on that. And now every time I move over here, I've got some weird uh, view on it. I come back to my stress plot, and it zooms into the, the view that I'm interested in. So here's a few shortcuts that I've learned and uh, might make it a little bit easier to apply simulations. I think the big one uh, to take away from this is the uh, option for inertial relief. And in that case, now you can run a simulation with no fixed supports. Just as an aside, uh, it is appropriate in some cases to use a support, and it'll help you with numerical stability. Sometimes you'll find that it just doesn't run for whatever reason. For example, if I look at uh, this simulation, if I look at from this view, notice how that it's off, uh, off the center. We'd expect all of the deformation to occur at z equals zero, but here we see a shift off to the left. This really doesn't look like a two-dimensional problem, and that can give you some uh, numerical st instabilities. So to constrain it only in the Z direction, go to Fixtures, right click, we'll do an Advanced Fixture, and Reference Geometry is selected, and I want to apply it to this face and to this face, and the Reference Geometry I'll use, uh, let's use the Front Plane. And now I'm going to restrict it, translations we could say in inches, all of these will be zero. If I click each one of these, Here's one along plane direction 1. Notice the direction of the arrows. This would prevent it from moving in the x-axis or in and out. This one, I add this one. This is direction 2. This would uh, keep it from moving up and down. And then this is the third direction, which prevents it from moving left and right. And it's that third direction that we want to restrain. So let's unclick uh, that direction and this direction, but this will just prevent it from moving left and right, prevent it from translating along the z-axis, which is what we would expect for two-dimensional bending, and I did the same thing on both sides. So with that, if that fixture in place, click OK, and we'll go back to the front view, run it, and now what I get, if I go to the side view, is that nice uh, two-dimensional deformation, which we would expect. And this can help you with numerical instabilities. If it really doesn't run, give that a shot. Here's the normal stress plot. Again, we see that uh, nice view in that direction. So try uh, a fixture like that if your uh, com computer isn't running.